Hi there and good morning and welcome to this video to show you how to make a response to Erwin Blumenfield. You can see over on the side here there's an example of a portrait where he's taken a front looking face and a profile face and combined them to create this really eerie looking image. I'm going to have a go at doing that over here in Photoshop. So in Photoshop you will need two photographs. You will need a profile and a front facing photograph. You will also need to do a little bit of prep. So the first thing we're going to need to do, let's move Photoshop over slightly so I can get to all the menus, is just make the profile picture see-through so I can arrange it in the correct place. You can see it's, I took it and it's slightly too big so I need to squeeze it down and press shift to keep the constrained proportions. I'm going to move it to the correct place, line it up so that I have the chin matching the chin. I still need to move it a little bit more. Make sure the head is exactly the same size. I'm going to come across and you can see it should all line up exactly where I want it. So if I do the prep first, it makes the rest of the piece of work a lot easier. To get the nose and the eye exactly and the eyebrow all lined up now. So that's the prep bit done. Okay, I'm going to make that back to being solid. Also, I need to crop the image. I'll do that while I'm in this mode, actually. So I go to the crop tool. I drag a box from approximately here over the face down to approximately there and leave a large gap over here. So I do that. Press Enter. Then press Control Plus to make the image bigger, and I can see what I'm working at, and I can do any adjustments to where my two layers are now. So I'm going to bring that eye right in the nose, and nose a little bit further down, bring it over a little bit. It's these little adjustments now that will make all the difference later. Now, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to add a layer behind everything. So I drag it to the back, and I'll click on the map and move that up there. So the background layer, I'm going to bucket fill black. So I'm going to click on the black, click on the bucket, and the bucket fill. So I've got a black layer behind everything, which is going to create this area here. Next, I need to add some details to it. So on the layer, which morning I'm going to use the select tool you can okay so once I've got this layer what I need to do is select the head shape here now there's different ways of doing that and I'm going to try and do it the most simple way to show you the easiest way first see if it works we use the magic wand and we'll make sure we've got a tolerance of 30. Make sure we've got a tolerance of 30. Now you can see it doesn't quite take the whole image, so I'm going to change that and put on a tolerance of 20. And even less, so we need to make the tolerance higher. So we'll try 40. Still not quite getting it because of the shadow. So instead, we'll use a different technique. If you can't do that, we'll use the quick select tool this time. And this time, we'll make sure we've got a fairly biggish size brush. And we'll click inside all of the face, but this can be more effective, like so. Okay. I've got a little bit at the top that I don't want, so I use the minus tool and I'll just get rid of that bit so I'm nice. And I'll go back to the plus tool and I'll make it how I want it on the minus tool again. That was the plus tool, sorry. And do that. Or not, I can always clean this edge up later. Right, so I am fairly completely happy with that. So once I've got the shape, I'm going to make a new layer. And then I'm going to get some white paint and I'm going to bucket fill in the new layer like so. 
I'm going to select inverse first, and then I'm going to bucket fill the layer. So if we now press select, deselect, we should see we've got a white edge. So if I hide that, you can see there's my profile outline. Okay. Next, if I bring the layer with the face in behind this and open the eye, you can see there is the face appearing in the image, which is great. I can then adjust it so that I've got it exactly where I want it in relation to my image. Once I've done that, I will then need to go to the layer with the face on, hide that, hide that, and using the quick select tool again, and the plus, I will select the face so I can put a nice black ground in. So what I will do here is I'll simply copy and paste it, Control Z, Control V, hide that one, and then you can see I've got the face, I've got the white cutout area, and then all I need to do then to make it look really fantastic is on this edge up here, I will use the eraser tool, which is way bigger than a minute. I have a nice hard edge on it today. And I'm just going to clean up this top edge here, making sure I'm on the right layer with the edges on. Clean up that area here. And then I need to go onto the layer with the face, go to image adjustments and black and white, click OK, and then I'm just going to come over here and have a look at the original. There we go, I think we need to enhance our contrast slightly, lose some of that bit here, so this would benefit from a soft edged eraser now, quite a large one, just tidy that edge up. Obviously, I don't like that a little bit in there. I'm also not very happy with the way that blends in there. Just fade that in. Then we need to do some adjustments to our brightness and contrast. So we'll make it a little bit brighter, give it a little bit more contrast. Or make it a little bit darker, actually. Okay, and then I think what I might do is just move it around ever so slightly to get a better fit so that it fits more effectively. And bring the nose over slightly and the mouth in there. I almost need to stretch it a tiny bit. I'll know when it looks right because it will create that wonderful optical illusion. There we go, happy with that. So we'll come out of that, click on the move to apply that. And there you go, there is our Erwin Bloomfield response using two photographs and a couple of layers and a bit of adjustment. Okay, have fun trying making your own one of these and you can also try, while we're here, um, rather than having a completely white area here, you can always try doing a gradient in here. And I might just, um, just do that quickly for you to show you what that would look like as well. So on this layer, I would use the Magic Wand tool. Select that area. I'll do it on a new layer to see if it works or not. To do a gradient, we need to have black and white selected. We go to the gradient tool, which is hiding behind the paint bucket. And then we will need to draw a line across the screen and fill in. I think it needs to be a bit longer. I think if I then control D, and if I go to image, adjustments, brightness, and I'll brighten that up. And I think, to be honest, that is more effective than that. So there's that, and there's that. 
is that, where is that, where is that, where is that. I think with the slight gradient, it has more of an old fashioned feel. If we look at the original, if I move this over slightly, I think, yeah, I'm much more happy with that. Okay, so that's how you add the gradient for the finishing touches. I'm not really sure about that bit up there, but there you go. Like I say, experiment, have fun, making your responses, and um, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, obviously check out more on Quentin Carpenter Nature Flowers on YouTube. Okay, and thank you. Goodbye. And good.